Hello ladies and welcome to uh, the Dwarf Fortress Voltar Army Succession Let's Play that I am uh, participating in currently. This is the second turn. The guy before me has, on has gone and that's the only other person who's been in control of this fortress besides me. So this is the second year. Actually, I think it might be the first year in winter. I'm not sure. Either that or it's spring of the next year, but I'm pretty sure it's winter. So, uh, so yeah, this is the second turn. The guy before me didn't uh, take any screenshots or uh, record his turn at all, so... Uh, I'm gonna do a tour of what he did first, and then after that, whenever you, whenever you see this, it'll just be me doing quick updates when something semi-interesting happens. So let's, let's see what he did. So it seems like a lot of the fortress has been built semi-outside, didn't carve much into the mountain. And he started to build a wall out of, is that microcline? Yes it is. Microcline is a really pretty bright teal color, sort of. Is that teal? No, no, it's turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. Um, so he started building a wall around here, but there's still this mass vast gap here that baddies could get into, but I don't expect the siege or anything yet. I think what I might do is I might channel out this, uh, this, this part that he's already started to channel out from the brook, or river, or whatever this is. I think it's a brook. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm gonna channel that out all the way over here, just to create a little moat, and then I'm gonna build a bridge over it. Or I might do a series of tunnels underneath it. No, that wouldn't work, because the traders wouldn't be able to get across. Or I could build a built some sort of drawbridge system in this wall here. I, I'm not decided yet. And, sorry for moving around so much. Um, and he's also started to dig out this giant stockpile area, I assume that's what he meant it to be for. So he started mining that out. Um, it's pretty large. I don't think in this version of Dwarf Workers that cave-ins can happen, just because you have a uh, You've dug a bunch underneath it. I think you just have to have like floating rock in order to cause a cave in. So I don't know if this will uh, this will be dangerous at all. But just in case, I think I'm gonna leave a few pillars of a uh, of rock there. So I'm gonna cancel the designations to mine out some parts of this. Yeah, just do that one in the middle. And um, and if I'm wrong, future. Um, successors in this, um, pardon that whistle, jeez, future people who, um, who take control of this, this fortress in the succession playthrough can just remove these if I'm wrong, but better safe than sorry. So I'm gonna leave these few pillars around just so we don't have a cave-in. Is there even anything above it? Yeah, there is. And then here we have some nice farms. That's nice. It's our food we'll make. Pretty good. No drink, though. Although we do have a brook, not having any alcohol is not a good thing at all, so... Hopefully we have some plump helmets growing. Um, yeah, we do. All year round there. Doesn't look like anything's growing here, so... I'll just fix up these farms, I'll be right back when that's done. Alright, so I've, uh, I've designated my dwarves to plant plum helmets in all of these all year round. And um, I don't think we have any other, I don't know what other seeds we might have. Uh, prickleberries, strawberries. I don't have experience growing anything other than uh, cave plants, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. I think you might have to be able, you might have to make a farm outside to do that. Which, I'm, that doesn't seem very dwarfy. I'm going to have most of my business going on underground. Even this, where it's like semi-outside still exposed to the outdoors, even though it, technically it does have a covering of the mountain. And then we have this central staircase going down. It goes down pretty deep. And then here we have some dormitories, beds for all our dwarves. Then we have a dining hall here. It's nice. I don't like that the uh, dining hall is so far away. Well, I guess it's not that far away, so I take it back. I was going to say it's pretty far away from the farms and food storage, but yeah, whatever. Here we've got this, another giant dugout area, and this hasn't caved in, so I doubt that the other one will. So this guy probably knows what he's doing. And we got some workshops, some gems, nice. So it looks like this is going to be a 
workshop area. I think I think I'm gonna um, put a, uh, a stockpile for gems and furnish and finished goods and furniture and stuff down here. Uh, just cause I don't think that there are craftsmen want to be walking all the way from here all the way up to the to the surface to go to the stockpile. Here we have another shaft going way down. Here's looks like some mining, some uh, strip mining has been going on here. Very nice. Looks like most of these gems being found here. Here's the microcline that's built the wall out of. Hopefully he found some ore, but he didn't post anything about what happened in his uh, in his turn, so I don't know. I have to check this stuff out. Lemonade. Yeah. Actually, no. I think I think something, either this or something spelled very similar to this, is actually. Um, no, I think this is a gem, because it's rough hewn, but I think lemonite or something like that is used to, to smelt iron, so that's pretty, it's pretty exciting. If not, then I'm, I'm a pretty big noob at this game. I mean, I've had, I, know, I, kind of, I pretty much know what I'm doing, but minor details like that, I might get wrong a few times. And here we go down, and here's some giant caverns down here. Good for him. He did not expose our fortress to the cabins, because that would be bad. Do we have a military? You have no military. That's fine. I usually don't have a military, except maybe one guy during the first year of a fortress anyway. Either, so. Let's check out our dwarves now. We've got 18 dwarves, so it looks like um, 11 migrants came. And none of our dwarves have died yet, which is good. Uh, most of the five of these are just children, so... Effectively, we have 13 dwarves. Children are just, uh, just dirty freeloaders, and they don't contribute anything, but they'll grow up eventually. It takes a while. Alright, good, we've got a broker. I assume he is also our, um, our bookkeeper. He is good. And our expedition. Oh, I see what he did there. Clelk Cle is the guy who, um, who had the fort before me, so he named the expedition leader after himself. I think I will be naming a dwarf after myself as well, but I have to play through and see which one see which one I like the best. Maybe our captain of the military, a big macho man, steel armor. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds a lot like me. Um yeah, it's a joke. Um anyway. <laughs> Looks like either he's built some uh some walls here, he's been doing some smoothing. No, he's just been building walls. Okay. Does everyone have a bed? Everyone except a few children and a few people. So I'll, th I'll, sort, I'll sort that out when I'm not recording. Uh, so I think that's about it. What have we got going on for the fortress? Um, we've got two miners. No, three miners. Okay, Cloak is a, uh, a miner as well. He's, he's, oh, I'm gonna do, what? It's under max, okay, here we go. So, Cloak is a pretty, uh, he's a pretty good miner as well. Legendary, which I'm, I'm pretty sure is the max level, and, uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is begin construction of that, uh, no, 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 first thing I'm gonna do is start getting my dwarves some alcohol, because, I mean, look at that, zero drinks, come on. Come on now, Cloak. You can't be giving dwarves water. They're dwarves. They drink alcohol. Right, yeah, so I'll see you. I'll see you then. Okay. Here's another problem. I've had, I've um, I'm anticipating a cat's explosion. You see this? Giving birth to a kitten. Yes, this is that's adorable and all, but look at this. Puppy, 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 puppy. And um, I'm assuming there's going to be cool kittens as well. Hens, kittens. Ah, look at all these animals. And I think I'm going to butcher about half of them before our dwarves are getting attached to them. Because I do not want a cuddly woodly explosion or whatever they're called. What 
whatever they're called on the wiki. But once we get a, a butcher station up and running, I think that's what's going to happen. I think our dwarves are going to be dining on a delicious cat, a delicious cat and a dog. So that might happen as well. Here's another thing I've, I've discovered about this fortress is that we have no masons. See, originally I thought we had some masons because I saw this dining room, but a, a closer inspection I noticed that those tables and chairs are actually made of wood. And we've only got one carpenter who doubles as our, uh, our woodcutter. So, I think I'm gonna make... Oh, we, don't, we don't even have any peasants, but I'm gonna transform some of our farmers and uh, our ranger into into uh, some stone workers. I mean, come on, we're dwarves, we're not dirty elf farmers, we're not we're not dirty human carpenters, we're dwarves, we're masons. So I think I'm gonna have to deal with these uh these ruffians. These dirty blasphemers. Okay, what is this carpentry? Here are our farms that designated to be built or plowed in this uh, clay level and there's a staircase leading straight down to the dining room and our liaison has arrived so let's put in some some orders uh, once we uh, once we coordinate a meeting with them so yeah here we go it's a good thing I was recording uh, was good timing so let's see what we want I don't know what kind of seeds and stuff we have but it can't hurt to have more so I'm gonna order some of all kinds how about this one? some of pigtails but not much yeah so we can have some other stuff we don't want cave wheat but everything else is good so we can have some variety besides plump helmets because that's the only thing I know we have because uh, Klempt or whatever his name was before me had uh, already had some plump helmet farms going so I don't know what other seeds we have so we're gonna order them all I don't know um, if we have an anvil or anything, we might have to go dig around in our stockpiles to see what we really have. We don't need any more pets, that is for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's all we need is, uh, some, actually I think we'll order some meat as well, just to make our dwarves happy. So, food. Meat, here we go. We don't want a lot of meat, we just want a big variety. We don't want a lot of one kind. Because all dwarves have different favorites and preferences. So, somebody's bound to be happy with all this variety. I think that's enough. We're not going to be that rich. Although, I did set up lots of craft dwarf, craft dwarf uh, workshops, and we do have an abundance of microcline to be worked into goodies. And look at all this microcline, that's ridiculous. I think that's what our Dwarf Fortress is going to be known for, at least during my year, my turn. It's microcline micro goods and crafts. Well, apparently there have been merchants here <laughs> ever since my turn started. So, um, my depot wasn't up because I didn't know they were here. Otherwise, I would have uh, assigned somebody to be an architect. So, it looks like we're not going to be trading with anybody this year. Does anybody have architecture enabled? Okay, this guy does. I guess that's why- oh, he's carrying a rock. He's carrying microcoin. So I guess that's why he's there. So, we might have a depot up in time anyway, but I don't think we're gonna have enough, have enough time to, uh, to haul all our goods to the, to the depot before they leave. Please leave. No. Something red happened, I wasn't paying attention. Um, yeah, whatever that means. Oh. Yeah, those are the farmers building my new farms. Okay. And there they go. Also, it appears that my giant farm of only pump helmets would... Okay, here's the, uh, here's the, the liaison. So, yep, that's what we want. No, we don't we want leather. Where's the, uh... Where's the seeds? Okay, so they're going to be bringing us some uh, highly overpriced seeds. Not cave wheat. Well, it's not a high priority for them to bring cave wheat, but yeah. 
they'll be bring, bringing, they'll be bringing, god damn, I can't talk, okay, they'll be bringing, excuse me, they'll be bringing lots of plump helmet spawn, and other good seeds to so we can plant stuff, so that's good. Be able to plant here because we don't have very much plump on the spawn, but we do have lots of seeds, so that leads me to believe that we do have other plants to grow. I don't know how many of them are underground plants, so yes, yeah, as you can see, they're set to be planting plump helmets year round. This is the dwarves, and that's what they eat, they eat mushrooms, delicious mushrooms. So, I think I'm going to uh, deconstruct all these farms and maybe seeds out of them that we can use on the other plant on the farms. So we'll see about that. I have ordered the um, the start of the construction on my giant moat right here. I'm just going to do one strip for now. I'm going to do it one strip at a time so nobody gets caught on the other side of the uh, of the moat because that would be, uh, that would be uh, unfortunate. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on how that goes. Well, I installed a kitchen area and food storage area right behind the, the dining room, and I've got a butcher shop ready. So I think I think it's time to deal with our cat's explosion. So as much as I love kitties and puppies, I think I'm going to um, not authorize the euthanasian euth euthanization of several of them, just so we don't, we aren't drowning in puppies. Just like Bob Barker says, keep the pet population in control or whatever, but he recommended that we neuter our pets, not, you know, butcher them and eat them, but you know, it's, har it's harsh times, these dwarves haven't had any booze, they're angry, they're gonna eat some puppies, that's what I do when I'm angry. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yes, I've uh, ordered the slaughtering of Several kittens, puppies, horses, mules, whatever I saw wandering around above. I'm not killing off all of them. I know we need uh, cats to kill off vermin in our storehouses. And we need dogs. We can train them later for war dogs. I doubt I'm going to be doing that, but... Because uh, I, I doubt there's going to be a goblin invasion or something like that during my rule. But maybe a future leader will use our dogs to make war dogs and hunting dogs and the like. So yeah, I didn't kill off all of them, just a lot of them. Just to control the pet population, just like Bob Barker advised. Alright, I've assigned three of our herbalists um, to stop being farmers and to uh, start being masons and crafts dwarves. So hopefully, yeah, see one of them is already manning the masonry station right here. And then these crafts dwarves stations will soon be built as well. So we can get some uh, some furniture for our dwarves dormitories because right now they're just beds except for our broker. So it's a spoiled noble brat. Well, he's not a real noble. He actually does some. He actually has some function, unlike the uh, the dukes and things we'll see later on. The slaughtering has begun. The wall to our uh, fort is now done, made of microcline, of course, and um, the moat is coming along pretty well. I had to uh, dig into the mountain a bit, because when I tried to build a bridge here, the moat was one tile too long to build a bridge. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to extend the moat here, but I'm going to make it one tile um, less wide, so I can build a bridge across that way. And I think I might, I'm going to carve in to this a little bit, so that merchants can get through that way. And I think I might go ahead and finish off this area. Just carve it all out, or maybe just this, just so that it's easier, so they don't have to do as much maneuvering around. And now our dwarves finally have something uh, good to drink. We have some uh, dwarven wine made of plump helmet, made of plump helmets, distilled from them, thanks to our distillery. And here is where we're butchering our animals. We have our kitchen, and here's our distillery. And I've decided to uh, remove the butcher shop because of the flies, and I'm going to rebuild it outside, because if the butcher shop is outside, 
won't attract flies and won't produce miasma or anything. Miasma, I mean, that's what I said, but yeah, I don't know if it's hard to understand. Anyway, it won't produce miasma for the dwarves. And yeah, it'll just be more healthy for the fortress if we build it outside the air out. And it's closer to the animals anyway, so. I've begun the construction of, uh, of some tombs. These two are for the, uh, the first two leaders of, uh, of this fort. Me and, uh, the other guy. I feel stupid. Clelk. Sorry, I forget your name all the time. But yes, me and Quelk. Uh, I think mine is going to be the nicer one. And it's only nicer because it has, uh, few gems in the wall, so we can carve into the gem, that'd be nice. And then I've commissioned two coffins to be built, and then I'm going to make these, uh, these two tombs for me and Quill. Food and drink stocks are growing. Well, the drinks haven't grown that much. Spring has arrived, so that leaves me with only three more seasons before my turn is over. Quilk is drowning, this is quite urgent. A few of my dwarves have been almost drowning like this before, but I've been watching Quilk for a while, and he hasn't, doesn't seem to be able to have gotten out. It's because he's over here where the water is streaming in, instead of swimming over here where he can actually get out. So hopefully Quilk will not die, because that would be pretty horrible if that happened. I'm gonna start working on his uh, tomb pretty quickly now. You don't want to die before you have your tomb. Just in case he does die, I'm gonna give him the nicer tomb, you know, out of courtesy. Hopefully Quilk does not die. Hopefully our, uh, our expedition leader does not die this early. That would be pretty horrible. But he's got a nice microcline coffin. Microcline, nice. Microcline, the staple of our fort. I haven't even said the name of our fort on video yet. Which probably do. Um, yeah, it's Akamendok. Pretty sure that's it. Well, let's go watch. Uh, let's go watch. Our clock on him. Hopefully he does not die. Okay. Well. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. But he was down there for a while before I decided to hit record because um, like he would be drowning and. I'm and uh, I'd seen other dwarves trying to dig this moat out the ground before too. So I just said, you know, whatever, he'll get out. And he swam towards the edge and he got uh, whisked away from the edge and he started drowning again. And he moved back towards the wall again. And that happened for like a almost a solid minute. He almost drowned. But he was able to get out, which is pretty fortunate. And for being a hero and uh, defending our fort with his, with the, um, by building that moat, I'm going to give him the nicer uh, tomb all the gems and things in the walls and on the floor. Oh god, what about these? I think I'm gonna need to... I think all of these dogs in this room and all the cats I'm gonna assign to be butchered. And here's something else again. See in the top right we have one idler. Well that idler is a cloak. And he's been sitting here for a while and he won't come down from that pillar he's on. He's scared. So he's just gonna sit up here and idle because he thinks he's stuck, even though he could probably swim away pretty easily. Uh, Quill, come on. Well, I'm gonna leave him there for now. And if he starts to starve or something, I'll, I'll try to think of something to do to get him out of that island. But he should just mine it out and let him himself. I don't know why he won't. Oh, he did. Okay, that's good. Now he's underneath. Um, drowning. I know this isn't really a close call. I highly doubt that he's actually gonna drown. But um, yeah, he's fine. No. No, he's not fine. No, he's not fine at all. Oh my God! I think I killed Cloak. Yes, I did. I killed Cloak. Drowned to death, building this moat. Oh no. Well, sorry, Quilk, if you're watching this. I killed you in my turn. My god, that's horrible. Oh my god, I think I've killed another one of our miners. Kumil, that is not, that's not Quilk's dwarf's original name. I checked. See, Quilk.
Klugstorf is named and Rick something. Not Kumil. So I've killed two of our miners. So there's the other corpse underwater. Yeah, this should be Kumil. And the, a bad, another bad thing about this is I don't think we're going to be able to actually uh, retrieve his corpse. So, I think I'm going to uh, forbid construction of this, this moat for now, until we get more miners. Because if we only have one miner, we really don't want him to die. He's incredibly bad. Oh, I just noticed our last miner is actually stuck on a pillar, just like Quark was before he died. So... Hopefully he will not drown as well. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign somebody to build a floor. Somebody should build a floor tile right here. So one of our masons is going to come around and build a micro client floor right here. And this miner is just going to hang tight and wait for that. He's not going to jump off and die. Okay, yeah, Kelk, Kelk, yeah, he already knew he was dead. Okay, I've assigned our miners, I mean, uh, <laughs> I guess it's only one miner now, to, uh, dig out this area down in the crypts. So these little ones, they are gonna be just for insignificant people to be buried, like, uh, that one miner who died. Actually, I don't know if we're gonna, even gonna be able to retrieve his body, because it's down at the bottom of the moat, in the middle of rushing water. Maybe I'll be able to build a plug or something to plug up that moat. But even then, it's still full of water, so I don't know how anybody's going to be able to dive down and collect this body. So maybe these aren't going to be useless for now. But at least we got Kulk's body. I mean, I know I killed him and all, but at least he got out of the water before he drowned. Well, my miner over here is very unhappy and he's unconscious. Hopefully, I think he's just, I think he's just sleeping. I don't think he, like, got knocked unconscious or anything. Well, where there is death, there is also life. So we've got a new baby. Okay, zero days old. Wow. Okay, eight granite, and then you're seven. Yes, this world was very young. It's only been seven years since this, its creation. Quite content, I think. Actually, I'm going to name her after... I'm going to name myself after her. This is going to be Mr. Wilsauce. Oh, yes, Mr. Wilsauce, the woman. I don't care. We're, uh, we're an equal opportunity uh, dwarf fortress. We don't discriminate against transvestites. They can mine just with all the rest of the dwarves. So, she's a citizen of the Fortunate Attic. Torches are working. The Fortunate Attic, I think, is the, um, I think that's the human name of her, our fortress, which is like our mark, darker, 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 something like that. Yeah, exactly like that. That's exactly what it's called. Anyway, so let's see. She's comfortable in social situations. Well, actually, she's not very much like me, but whatever. I like the idea of following the baby from her, um, from her birth all throughout her life. And it's going to be me. She's going to be born with a tomb. Um, familiar routines? I don't really like that either. Rules comforting? Eh. Takes time making decisions like that. Needs alcohol to get through the working day. She's zero days old. See, she's she's even more of a man dwarf than uh, that other guy complaining about as well. Oh well, this is a baby who wants alcohol. Come on now, well. All right. So orthoclave. If she liked um, what's that stuff called? Microcline. If she liked microcline, that'd be perfect. Um, absolutely detest the Um. She's actually not a very good dwarf with her stats, but stats don't actually, you know, stats don't actually matter that much. Okay, so it's going to take her about 12 years before she becomes an actual, like, working dwarf. So the fort is probably going to end before she's actually useful. But, uh, I don't care. Okay. So she's a dwarf baby. So... Mm -hmm. 
sister will sauce the woman. Makes makes perfect sense. And um, profession name. I don't know what she's gonna do. I guess we'll see. So Mr. Mr. Will sauce the baby. Alright, this this guy's carrying some microcline, so I think Yeah. I think he's gonna be building a platform to get this guy out. Hopefully he will he will survive the walk back to the uh, the dining hall so he can get himself something to eat. Come on, Mason Murray. Also, I've continued my animal massacre. I've, I've set all of the dogs and cats and yaks and horses and everything up here to die. Oh, migrants! Just I love migrants. What was that before the migrants? Oh. I think Aerith is my carpenter, and ever since I've gotten in command of this fort, I've just had him making barrels. He's made like ten masterpiece barrels ever since then. Because, you know, we got to have dwarven wine. Our dwarves live a, a bland life, but they live a very safe one, except for our miners, who drown horribly. Because all they have to drink is dwarven wine and eat plump helmets, but at least they have food. And I think he's free. Okay, I just got the idea to check the contents of a building. And uh, Cloak's body is indeed in here. So, I'm, um, I, once again, for like the tenth time, I'm very sorry for killing you, Cloak, but at least you have a, a nice gem tomb. I think I might knock out some of the walls and replace them with gem walls, too. How, how pimpin' would that be? I never used that, uh, that adjective. But uh, I think that's an appropriate an appropriate, appropriate um, description of a, of a gem wall, pretty pimping. Although I don't think I'd do that. I think I'll just engrave all these walls with cool inscriptions. They're probably all going to be pictures of like dwarves drowning. If you've ever read uh, Boat Murdered, I would highly recommend it. It's a much better succession dwarf let's play than this. And the engravings in that one are awesome. Oh my god, look at our new population. 35. We went from like I don't even know what it was before. It was like in the teens. And uh, we got a, almost 20 new dwarves. So we're gonna have to go sort them out with living quarters. Okay, so um, our newcomers are gonna be living a little bit more Spartan than our old, our old people. And these are their new bedrooms, which are a little more than like pods. They won't have very much room to do anything but sleep in here. But, uh, you know what, that's what bedrooms are for, and they should be getting their lazy migrant bugs to work. Oh, I should probably um, assign my barrel maker to make something other than barrels for the first time in a year. Start making some new beds, because I don't think we have that many in storage. Oh, we've got... Oh, look, I can see one. Well, despite my, uh, my best butchering efforts, the pet population has actually grown since the last time you saw this page. So I've commissioned um, two more butchery stations to be built, and I've uh, I've assigned the butchery a butchery job to a few more of the migrants. So hopefully we can kill these damn puppies. When they come off. All right, I think I'm gonna um, start mining again where the old guy was mining. Um, so I think I'm gonna do it in the same style he was. Cause I'm, okay. Some of our migrants actually were leather workers, and I've set up a uh, tanning and leather working shop so that we can uh, start pumping out some leather armor for our, uh, our eventual um, military. And slaughtering messages have been coming up constantly ever since I set up three butchering stands. So there's basically constant death going on. And uh, if we look at our, I'll show you my, um, my stores. Okay, you can see that uh, the majority of our diet is meat. The majority of that meat is dog meat. Uh, I don't know where cat meat. Cat meat's right there. Well, actually, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't butchered many, very many cats. But we have butchered lots and lots of dogs. So, yeah. So, yeah. They're actually not eating as many pump helmets as they thought. Most of the pump helmets have been going to uh, making wine. We really don't have very much, and since we have tons of migrants now, I think it's going to put a big strain on our uh, 
alcohol supply, but we don't have enough pump helmet spores to make more. So we're gonna have to wait until the uh, until the traders come. Da -na -na -na. That's right. We struck gold. Now that's amazing. Gold is not a very useful metal at all, but I mean, come on, we're dwarves. There really isn't anything better than finding gold. Well, except, of course, finding adamantine, which is even more valuable to dwarves. So, definitely going to be mining out all this gold, and I think I'm going to set up a smelter, and I'm probably going to build a golden coffin for uh, Mr. Wills, also the woman. Well, I just realized that I'm a huge idiot, and I didn't notice this giant seam of native gold the whole time. That's right, all this yellow stuff was gold the whole time. I didn't even notice it. That's mostly because uh, Kulk actually mined out that stuff. I just assumed, I just assumed it was gems, but it's actually gold. Wow. So I'm definitely going to want to get all that stuff mined out. And here we've got our, uh, our gold smelting operation coming. He's making charcoal, and then I've got some orders to smelt gold ore with it. Alright, we've got our metalsmith's forge up and running, and I've uh, commissioned um, a repeated amount of gold statues. So, the metalsmith is just going to keep building them until he runs out of gold. Okay, apparently I missed the notification that there were uh, traders here, because I just realized that, that they were here, and I uh, never saw the notification. So, it looks like they've been here for a Okay, here they are. So, I'm going to... Start moving some stuff over here. Let's see. We have lots of crafts and uh, useless things that we can sell. So, what is this? Looks like they don't want that. Well, we have gems at least. Okay, here are my crafts. I didn't see that before. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna designate my dwarves to send as much of them up as I can. And you see, the distance isn't very far, as I said before, even though my stockpile is deep underground. And the summer has arrived, so that means I only have two more seasons left with my dwarves. I am both happy and sad. I think that's the, uh, that's the miner who we left at the bottom of the, uh, of the moat. He was pretty angry that we didn't bury him properly. in the mine. Hopefully he does not kill my miner. But miner, please run. Alright, I need to keep an eye on this ghost. Oh, he's still mining, run away. Uh, we do have a floor hatch. Um, securing the mine away from everything else. Yeah, ghosts can go through walls. So this guy's not great. Yep. I think the uh, the ghost will be able to just travel right through our uh, right through our our uh, floor hatches, so we're not safe at all. Us, and we have no military whatsoever. And our manager is still not coming up to trade. Our broker, rather, always said something. Pretty friendly ghost. He hasn't attacked me, buddy. Excellent. So I'm gonna trade my gold bars. Because we have plenty of gold to mine down. No, it doesn't really seem to have much that I want at all. I don't think that this is the uh, this isn't the caravan from this isn't the dwarven caravan. Well I think I found the source of the problem. The reason why these guys didn't have anything useful whatsoever is because they were dirty elves. Oh. If I 
she had any military or anything like that, any way to dispose of them, I would probably kill them. But unfortunately, I don't. Okay, the ghost has now entered our uh, dining area, but he hasn't been violent at all. Alright, I've decided that um, we've been unprotected for long enough, and that there's probably going to be a goblin siege any minute now. So, oh, it's migrants. So I've decided that I'm going to resume uh, construction of the moat, but I'm going to be a lot more careful this time. And I'm, I'm going to um, build the whole moat out first, and then I'm going to let the water in, and hopefully my last miner won't drown during, during all that. Alright, so it looks like we've gotten five new dwarves from that migrant wave, unless there's still more coming. Okay, our miller, whatever that means, we don't even have a, we don't have a mill, we don't have any wheat, but he's been taken by a strange mood. So let's see what workshop he takes up. He's probably going to build us an artifact if we can get him the right stuff. Alright, um, since it doesn't look like the mode is going to be completed anytime soon, I've ordered the construction of several cage traps, just in case we have a siege or something some sort of attack, and I built a door on the other side, so there's one choke point, the only entrance is through here or through this door, and now I'm counting on goblins not being able to open doors, and I don't know whether or not they can, because all the goblin teachers I've fended off, I've used, um, I've used drawbridges, so I don't know if they can open doors or not. I've always kept them out with drawbridges. So I guess if they can open doors, we're in for a lot of fun. I've decided it's better to be safe than sorry, and I assume that goblins can open doors, because that'd be pretty ridiculous if they can't if they couldn't. So I've decided to replace the door here with a microcline wall. And once I get the uh, moat up and running, I'll just replace that with a door. Hulk's tomb is actually uh, completed now. We've got four gold statues in each corner, or one in each corner, really. And there are engravings on all the walls and floor. So, yeah, looks pretty good. We're running out of room in this um, this one workshop slash storeroom here. So I think what I'm going to do is on the, um, the next level down, I'm going to carve out a huge room, just like this one just for storage, and that should, that should, uh, we should be set for storage after that for a really long time, so I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so that, uh, that guy who, um, who had a strange mood a while ago, I thought he was going to, uh, claim a, a workshop and make us an artifact, but apparently that was not what, he, that was not his intent. Actually, he just went insane, he's gone to berserk, and he's about to go kill a bunch of people, and animals, and children. But I think what happened is, um, he wanted to claim a workshop, but the workshop he was after was not open. Or we hadn't built the kind of workshop he wanted yet. So he just sat around until he became insane. So let's see what he does. him in the trap. Yeah, he's caged. But I want to go down and see what's going on with this mule. So he's chasing a dog. Okay, looks like... Okay, the, the dog is injured. This guy's a little... Left lower leg is hungry. I think this is the crazy miller. Yeah. So he's chasing a 
everybody around. I don't know why nobody's why nobody's actually fighting back. Okay, now he's beating up a child. I wish we had some military. Hopefully he doesn't kill the child. Uh, this is not okay. He's chased the child onto the bed and he's like, okay. Oh god. Oh my goodness. left foot off, um, and the rest of the child's body is injured, the child has died, and beaten to death by the miller, and there's blood everywhere, okay, well, while the miller continues his killing spree, there's really nothing I can do about it, but I'm gonna go ready all of these burial of receptacles for all the deaths that are going to uh, fall out. He's attacking another child. This is not good. Well, this one dwarf has caused a pretty big pop problem because if you look at all these dwarves, they're trying to get in to the food storeroom, but they can't because they're scared of him. So they're all getting really hungry and thirsty out here. So. Hopefully this guy will hurt and kill this kid so that he will leave. Well, I'm going to make a militia commander and hopefully he'll deal with it. We don't need a uniform, we just want to deal with this problem. Alright, he's on minor. More active. go in and save the day. Yep, here comes the miner. Yep. Why didn't I do that from the start? Okay. So he just came in and got his left lower arm and his right lower leg torn off by a pickaxe. I think this is an off. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Okay, well he saved the day. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. Sorry about that. I'm a noob. Okay, so we've got a dwarven child who's probably going to die because we have no hospital. And then we've got a dead berserk man. But luckily nobody starved or anything. Yeah, he bled to death from pickaxe wounds. Wow, that's an awesome uh, That's an awesome military commander. He just ran up and killed the guy with a pickaxe. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner though. Well, we'll leave that big for now. I think I've probably, I think I've finally fixed our ghost problem, even though it wasn't very much of a problem. Because, um, I put a coffin down here for burial, and now it says that, uh, the ghost is dwelling in it, so I don't know if he's just, like, using it as a residence, or if he's finally, like, using it, if he's finally, um, been at peace. Now, or I don't know what I'm trying to say. But yeah. Or if he's finally at peace. Because I haven't seen him around. Maybe he's in the mine or something. But I think two children, or one child died, the other one is probably going to die. And then that berserk guy also died. So let's, let's have a count of everybody who's died so far. We've had Cloak, the expedition leader. Then we had another minor die, so that's two. Then we had a child be beaten to death. That's three. And then we had the berserk guy die, so that we have four four deaths so far. I think. Unless I'm forgetting somebody. No, the ghost is not at rest. He's not a he's not gone. He's right here. So I guess he's just using that coffin as a residence. Well, now that's the fifth death. I think that's the kid who was in the fight with the Miller. Yeah. So he. I want to see. Can I see his wounds? I want to see if this is actually being yeah, beaten by the Miller, and then he uh, crawled into the, this bed right here, where he bled to death. I think that's what happened. 
Alright, I've decided that um, this whole moat business is uh, too much hassle. It's not really worth it at all. So I've decided I'm just going to build a giant uh, microcline wall all around the place. And actually it's probably going to be just as, if not more, effective at keeping out things than the moat. I don't know why I wanted to have a moat so bad. The wall is a lot better. But, um... Moat, moat is way cooler, obviously. So maybe, I mean, my time with this fort is almost over. So maybe somebody in the future will finish my moat for me. That'd be lovely. And then I constructed a, a bridge out of microcline, of course. And then I'm gonna build a lever somewhere inside to open and close it. We have more migrants. So, and we have plenty of room in the bedroom. Well, not plenty. Actually, I don't know if we have much at all. I don't know if we're going to have enough. I'll be going to smoothing out all this whole room here. I have to see how many go. Alright, looks like four so far. I'll wait till they all come in. The bridge is now complete, and uh, most of the wall is also. And I think the parts of the wall that aren't done yet are mostly protected by the, by the moat, except for this little part here which I think monsters can just uh, jump in and jump off on the other side. You should cancel it. So now I'm going to connect this bridge to the lever which I have in this corner right here. So any future uh, proprietors of this fortress, just, if you ever get attacked, just remember this lever in the bottom right corner of this workshop. And also, the, uh, the second storm room is coming along next. And then we've got our, uh, our ghost mascot watching our miners. So yeah, that's about, that's about all that's going on here. The season's almost over. Winter should be upon us soon. And then uh, my turn for this uh, succession door fortress playthrough should be over. And the next person should, uh, should step in. Alright, a liaison and a new caravan have arrived. And I can't let the I think that's the yeah, that's the dwarves. That's the play. Alright, here we are trading. The gold bars are worth a lot. I probably do not need this many at all. Although they're probably gonna chip me on the price. Oh, well, they're not there are my fellow dwarves, so they might not hurt me off. Um, let's see what they've got. They did have some platinum back there. But I hope they have some steel, that'd be nice. I probably should have ordered that from them. Because we could trade gold for steel, that'd be really awesome. Uh, they have a bunch of crap just like the elves. Buy the, I could buy all this crappy bronze stuff and melt it down to make other things. Out of bronze, like picks. I probably should have ordered other picks too. That would have been a good idea. Oh, but they do have some, which is nice. And an iron pick as well. And a steel pick. Wow. Well, hopefully we have enough gold for that. I want to save the copper. I don't know why I brought that. Ooh, that's all I have. Well, the traders still make a huge profit on this. I'm guessing they'll accept this. I want to get my seeds, though. I want my legendary miner to get that steel pickaxe. You tear up rocks. Pods, take that. Grab temple cups, sweet pods, rock nuts, pump helmets. Mm -hmm. Is that all the seeds? Can't be. Rock. 
want me. Yeah, they're not gonna accept that. Even if I had a bunch of even if I had all my copper bars, they wouldn't accept that. Well I don't think I really need that pick. Or really any of them. I can make I can make my own. before you can close off this bridge, then uh, they'll be forced into these traps. And I'm probably going to fill this whole area up with cage traps, just in case we have like a huge uh, attack on us. Okay, here comes a uh, liaison, so we can order some things. Charcoal. 
the only thing I can think of to really make more cages to load these traps is uh, gold. So I'm gonna actually smith about I'm gonna smith like 10 to 15 cages of gold. That should be good. All right, since um, I'm having such a fuel problem, I can't make any more charcoal because of a uh, I'm basically the forest at all the land above. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my dwarves to mine down until we hit the lava. Alright, our stone crafter has become possessed. Okay, he's made a artifact mug. <laughs> it's not the most useful artifact, but uh, it should be worth something. Well. I think I missed something. I was supposed to stop at, uh, at winter, but apparently I, uh, I skipped that. So, or I missed it when the warning came up. Oh, no. Winter. Winter. Uh. My turn's over. I've had a, uh, actually over a year, I accidentally, uh, stayed too long so I didn't realize winter had come. So I'm sorry about that, that wasn't intentional. So this looks, this looks like this is the end for my reign over the fort. So I'm gonna go through one last tour. This is the fort as it was when I last left it. Here's the microclimate wall all the way around the fort. Here's the half ass moat that two of our miners died uh, digging out. One of them is still at the bottom. He is now our, our friendly ghost comrade and he roams around the halls of our dwarf fortress uh, haunting people. But he's not that violent. Then we have the drawbridge. Tons of cage traps, so we're pretty good defense-wise, although we have no military to speak of. Here we have some butcher shops, trade depot, some gold bars lying around it, and then we have our main staircase, which goes down into our farms. Here's our farms right here, and I dug out some another area so we can expand our farms later, although we have pretty good food stores. 1,703 food, 372 drink, that's pretty good. So down one more, we have our dormitories. Um, we might need more later. All the ones on the left side here are open. And there are a few on the right over here that are open as well. Everything else is taken up here. We've got 50 dwarves, two miners, two woodworkers, and all the rest there. giant stockpile slash workhouse or workhouse workroom or uh, a workshop I mean okay I can't remember the word workshop and we got some smelters over here this is the lever that uh, if you pull it it will close the or raise the uh, bridge sealing us off from the outside world then down here is our second storehouse full of goodies down even more some mines. Those are my crappy mines. These are the tombs. This is the uh, crypts down here. If you go up these stairs, if you go up this staircase, you go you arrive at uh, you arrive at Cloak's um, tomb with four golden statues and it's engraved all along the wall. And then here is Miss Wilson's uh, tomb, even though she's just a baby. <laughs> We're already thinking about her death. And it has no furnishings except for a coffin. And it's not even engraved yet. 
just smooth thing down here some more. We go to the actually good mines made by made by Cl made by Cloak. He dug these out before I arrived for the first turn. Then uh, here's where I'm trying to dig down. And here's the underground caverns. I'm trying to dig down to the magma so that I can get some forges running because we really have no fuel on this map. And that's about it. Nothing much else to say. So good luck to the next person who has this fort. <laughs>